In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In the waters of baptism, Jacob died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. My brothers and sisters, the Lord is a faithful God who created us all after his own image. All things are of his making, all creation awaits the day of salvation. We now entrust the soul of Jacob to the abundant mercy of God, that our beloved child may find a home in his kingdom. Let us pray. O God, who have set a limit to this present life so as to open up an entry into eternity, we humbly beseech you that by the grace of your mercy you may command the name of your servant Jacob to be inscribed in the book of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. 
The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction, but they are in peace. For if before men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace he proved them, and as a sacrificial offerings he took them to himself. And in the time of their visitation they shall shine, and shall dart about as sparks through the stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all fall asleep, but we will all be changed in an instant, in the blink of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 
For that which is corruptible must clothe itself with incorruptibility, and that which is mortal must clothe itself with immortality. And when this which is corruptible clothes itself with incorruptibility, and this which is mortal clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. It was about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. Now there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph, who, though he was a member of the council, went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken down the body, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had been buried. At daybreak on the first day of the week, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were puzzling over this, behold, two men in dazzling garments appeared to them. They were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. They said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has been raised. The Gospel of the Lord. I want to begin just by expressing all of our condolences to, uh, to Cliff and to Elizabeth and to Ree and Allie and all the members of Jacob's family, uh, to his girlfriend, Christina. Um, Jacob was somebody who was a son, he was a brother, he was a nephew, an uncle, he was a boyfriend, and a, he was a friend to many, many people. And there are a lot of people who are going to miss him greatly uh, in the years to come. Certainly, whenever there is somebody that we have, whose friendship we have known, somebody that we have loved, there is a feeling of loss. And what is that loss? It is the fact that we will not be able to hear their voice again, that we won't be able to give them a hug, that we will not be able to have that experience of knowing them in, physically in this life again. And that is something that is a very real sense of loss because as human beings, we want that closeness to one another. And Jacob was somebody who just, his, a smile that lit up the room, somebody who had you know, a little bit of a sense of mischief in him. His family said it's like, eh, he probably knew well he was no saint, but at the same time, he was somebody who it just had a, a marvelous sense of, of play and a sense of life. 
And somebody, for somebody who is so full of life, it is a tremendous loss when all of a sudden that life is no longer here among us here on earth. And that is something that is a very real feeling of loss because Jacob was somebody who had lived life to the full, somebody who had a real experience, even though he's been taken from us at a young age, is somebody who really had brought that sense of life to everything that he did. And even when struggling with a, an illness like epilepsy is something that, of course, casts a shadow over a person's life, you just almost would not have known that with Jacob because he was just full of life. He was not somebody who lived under that shadow, but somebody who completely lived his life for his family, for his friends, who understood how to enjoy all of the blessings and the good things that God places in our life. And today, even as we gather, we can be thankful for those ways in which Jacob was blessed in his life and the great blessing that he was to all of us. Certainly, as we hear the words of this gospel, the gospel of the crucifixion and the resurrection, that paschal mystery of Jesus' death and resurrection, certainly the cross of Jesus Christ represents that sense of loss. It is perhaps very easy for us today to identify with those faithful disciples, the faithful women who stood beneath the cross of Jesus. And even though Jesus throughout his ministry had said that he would rise on the third day, it is very hard in the moment that you're experiencing the loss to be able to remember that promise of resurrection. It can be hard to remember that the story has a very happy ending for all concerned. And for those faithful disciples who stood beneath the cross who experienced a profound sense of loss, as the man that so many of them had given up everything in their lives for, as Jesus, who is their teacher, Jesus, who had inspired them to follow him, to be a part of the kingdom of God, as they see him crucified and see the life leave his body, certainly his disciples felt loss. They felt a sense of grief in that moment. But that is a grief that turns to joy at the promise of resurrection, the resurrection on the third day, that Jesus, who rose from the dead in order to bring eternal life to all, is something that is reflected even as we celebrate Jacob today and remember that mystery of faith that formed him in his own life. Certainly, it is oftentimes difficult to see the good that comes out of sacrifice. Oftentimes, we have to look very hard when we are in a difficult situation, in a moment of grieving, to be able to see anything good about it. And yet certainly on Friday evening, as Jacob was being removed from life support, as he, it was a moment of terrible grief. It was a moment of suffering, but it was also a moment in which grace filled that room. And certainly for Jacob who wanted to be an organ donor and for his family to make sure that that request was honored, certainly Jacob has given life to other people. Even in his own death, we are able to see how that gift of life has been given to others. For many, we, there are many people who want to be organ donors, but in fact, something that is perhaps a surprising fact is that for most people, the circumstances don't align that way. It's not always possible to be able to give that gift of life to somebody else by being an organ donor, but in Jacob's case, that has happened. And even in his death, there has been the opportunity for other people to be given the gift of life. And that is something, certainly, as we reflect upon the mystery of the cross, and on the mystery of the resurrection, the mystery of the life of Jesus Christ that is lived in each and every one of us as his disciple, that is certainly something that is a marvelous experience as we are able to witness Jacob's life. And certainly the great gift and sacrifice that he made, that if there is a good to be found there, it is the fact that he was willing to share his life, his literal life with other people. And certainly for Jacob, he also had a deep and abiding faith. His mother Elizabeth spoke of how the Anima Christi prayer was something that they would whisper together as they came back from communion every time that they came to Mass. And that Anima Christi prayer was so important to Jacob that he got verses of it tattooed on his side. And if he'd been, I marked to his family, I said, you know, if he'd been a little more rotund, he could have got the whole thing on there. <laughs> But in fact, he only had his favorite verses from that Anima Christi prayer that you can find on the, the folder for today's funeral service. Because certainly Jacob had a deep and abiding faith, a deep and abiding trust in his savior. 
I came here a few months ago from the parish of St. Bridget in Tahlequah, and it's a parish dedicated to St. Bridget of Ireland, and as I was there and learned many of the legends of her life, one of them was her great prayer about the kingdom of heaven and what it was like. And I'd like to just conclude by reading a portion of that prayer because for anybody who knew Jacob, you know how exactly appropriate it is. St. Bridget said, I would like a great lake of beer for the King of Kings. I would like to be watching heaven's family drinking it through all eternity. I'd like to give a lake of beer to God. I'd love the heavenly host to be tippling there for all eternity. I'd love the men of heaven to live with me, to dance and sing. If they wanted, I'd put at their disposal vats of suffering. White cups of love I'd give them with a heart and a half. Sweet pitchers of mercy I'd offer to every man. I'd make heaven a cheerful spot because the happy heart is true. I'd make the men contented for their own sake I'd like Jesus to love me too. I'd like the people of heaven to gather from all the parishes around. I'd give a special welcome to the women, the three Marys of great renown. I'd sit with the men, the women of God. There by the lake of beer, we'd be drinking good health forever, and every drop would be a prayer. And let us stand and bring our needs and prayers to God our Father. In baptism, Jacob received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our brother Jacob was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love. Gather them into the eternal kingdom of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from epilepsy, that they may be given courage and consolation in their affliction, knowing the love and support of family and friends. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who trust in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all those whose faith is known to you alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Jacob. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, hear the prayers of your people. Grant peace and consolation to our hearts that we may abide always in your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in our offertory hymn in your red worship hymnal, number 609. The King of Love, my shepherd, is 609 in the red worship.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Jacob, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For it is at your summons that we come to birth, by your will that we are governed, and at your command that we return on account of sin to the earth from which we came. And when you give the sign, we who have been redeemed by the death of your Son shall be raised up to the glory of his resurrection. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith We proclaim our death, O Lord And all that's your resurrection Until you come again Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
may make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, and his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all of the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all of the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Lord, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Jacob, whom you have called from this world to yourself, Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. When the earth, from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. And when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Jacob may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated a moment. Uh, we have a, a couple of representatives to speak on behalf of the family. thought about what I was going to say here. I figured I could probably go on for hours about how we enjoyed our time together and how we had fun. But I put it into a speech, so here it is. Our friend Jake was a nut. <laughs> My name's Anthony. I've been Jake's friend for over a decade now. I met him in a Reese's parking lot. From the first time I met him, it made me feel like we've been friends for a long time. There's nothing Jake wouldn't do. As Jake's friends, we shared memories of skiing, wrestling, singing, dancing, traveling, fishing, cornhole, backgammon, pool volleyball, drinking, and all around having a good time. He always made everybody feel welcome just by being himself. And gatherings without him felt noticeably empty. Jake always expected you to expect the best out of yourself. He set a standard on how to be humble, how to be a true friend, and how to look out for others. Overall, he served as the blueprint on how you would want to live your life. Jake always worked hard, played hard, and never wasted a moment, never held anything back. He was the best friend, teammate, and role model you could ask for. He will always be the love that carries me, a driver of faith, and an inspiration for others. I'll tell you one thing, the beard just got better in heaven. And if you notice, the next time at communion, I didn't know that you guys were gonna have communion, but I'm sure, he realized that the wine might have just been a little bit tastier. You know, Jake took a part in that. Uh, I just want to say I love you, buddy. We all do. Thank you for the memories, man. Anybody have a box of Kleenex? <laughs> Good morning. My name is Bruce Morgan, and Nancy, my wife, and I count the nuts as among the blessings in our life. Elizabeth, Cliff, Hallie, Ree, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I want to share with all of you some glimpses of Jacob. I got to know him as a boy, an adolescent, and as a blossoming adult. A man. About 15 years ago, on a hot July day, Nancy and I moved across from the nuts. I saw a kid in the yard. I walked over. Hey, kid, you play baseball? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you any good? Yeah. <laughs> Are you on a team? No. Want to play for me? Maybe. <laughs> Go talk to my parents. Wow, what a boy. And I mean in the old-fashioned sense of the boy. Mischief. For those of you old enough to remember, think Dennis the Menace minus the cowlick. <laughs> Fishing, firecrackers, frogs, and oh my gosh, during the World Cup, vuvuzelas across the neighborhood. Nobody slept. 
even then, 15 years ago, he had a spark in his eye. He had a look that to this day, in the photos we saw last night, I know something you don't know. Gosh, that was something. He was a friend of my son's, a son to my wife and me. I'd come home, and the kitchen, oh, icing everywhere. <laughs> Food everywhere, crumbs. To this day, I think when I clean some of the cabinets, some of that icing might still be there. But the laughter, the smiles, oh my gosh, what a blessing. In high school, of course, we would see him less as our lives took somewhat different paths. And for some reason, he chose to remain on the teams I coached. We didn't win much, but boy, I think we had more fun than anybody. He loved getting on base. He didn't much care how he got there, <laughs> like at all. I'm pretty sure his left shoulder is still sore in heaven from all the balls he leaned into just to get on first base. <laughs> his pride as an adult, as he was going off to learn to be a brewer, and as I talked to him, and we would come back and talk to Nancy and me, setting his own path, his pride in setting his own path, doing it his way, the right way. His dreams. I'd love nothing more than to have seen them come true. And so, I'll leave you with a story. We didn't get many people on base on the teams I coached, but Jacob somehow was always there, that left shoulder. <laughs> and Jacob was one of the few kids I coached who always had a green light to steal a base, and boy, did he love stealing bases. Awkward, gangly, knees, elbows, everything. <laughs> Falling and still getting there faster than anybody I had. And he especially loved stealing home to score a run. Jacob, you're home. Please rise. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope that one day we too shall joyfully see the Lord when he comes in glory. Our firm belief is that Jacob Cash, because he was baptized, has already entered this new life. Our firm hope is that we shall do the same. Let us ask God to comfort his family and friends and to increase our desire for the joys of heaven.
You are the author and sustainer of our lives, O Lord. You are our final home. We commend to you Jacob Cash, our child. In baptism, he began his journey toward you. Take him now to yourself and give him the life promised to those born again of water and the Spirit. Turn also to us who have suffered this loss. Strengthen the bonds of this family and our community. Confirm us in faith, in hope, and in love so that we may bear your peace to one another and one day stand together with all the saints who praise you for your saving help. We ask this in the name of your Son, whom you raised from among the dead, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother Jacob to his place of rest. Our closing hymn is number 737 in the Red Worship. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, 737.